Hey, good morning, church. Let's stand to our feet. Are you ready to worship this morning?
Turn it around. 
of all, let's lift our hands toward heaven today. Everything, everything is changing now. Now, right now, right now, right here, in this place, your circumstance is turning around. Your situation is turning around. In the name of Jesus, we declare it today. Everything changes now. Now. Father, your spirit is here. Move throughout this great congregation today. Touch hearts, touch lives, touch bodies today, God. In the name of Jesus, let your kingdom be manifested in every heart and in every life here today. We declare it. We believe it. We receive it in the wonderful name of Jesus. Come on, let's give God the best shout of praise we can give him today. He's worthy. He's worthy. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Victory Church today. Come on, would you take a moment, turn around to two or three people, give them a high five and say, hey, welcome to Victory Church today. everybody loving this beautiful fall weather isn't it awesome come on love it love it so glad to have you here with us this morning at victory church we want to take this opportunity to welcome you we love it when you're here i said we love it that's not just a statement that really is our heart we want you to come to victory church and have an experience that so touches your heart and your life that you just say, walking out the door, I can't wait to get back to that place. Come on, we love it when you're here. And so we want to take this opportunity to welcome any guests that we may have with us here for the very first time. You'll notice that our card system in the back of the chairs is just a little bit different today. We've updated, we've upgraded, right? And so you'll find there a card that says connect on it. If you're a guest with us today, find that card that says connect, pull that out. Take the opportunity to fill that out fully and completely. Following the service, take it out to our Connect Center. See how we did that? Connect, connect, right? Take it out to the Connect Center. We have a wonderful gift we'd like to give to you, just our way of saying welcome to the Victory family. And what do we say to all of our first time guests? We love it when you're here. In fact, we love it so much, we're going to offer you the four-week victory challenge. You come and hang out with us for four weeks, and we believe you will find a place that you can call home. Amen? Well, how many of you are worship, ready to worship God with your giving today? Are you ready? We just want to say thank you so much for your partnership in the ministry. It is your faithfulness in giving that helps us keep moving forward in strength. And here's just what we say. If victory has done anything for you, if he's, if he's touched your heart in any way through this ministry, then we want to encourage you to consider partnering with us financially. Amen? And uh, if you're here with us today and you're a guest, please don't feel any obligation to give in this offering. This is for our members and our regular attenders who call Victory their church home. We want you to be blessed today in the house. So thank you for your faithful partnership in giving today. Heavenly Father, thank you for the wonderful privilege we have to worship you today, even through the simple act of giving. God, we know your word is true. You said if we'll take care of your house, God, you would take care of our house. So we stand in faith, believing in the promise of your word today, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. God bless you as you give. Let's check out what's happening this week at Victory Church. Family. My name is Hannah. 
My name is Trevor. Let's see what's happening this week at Victory Church. All right, first up in the update, we're currently looking for volunteers to help create fun, safe, and Bible-based trunks for our Trunk or Treat event that we will be hosting here at church on Halloween night. If you would be interested in helping decorate your trunk, please sign up at the table in the foyer or see Kim Parkins. Next in the update, the men's ministry will be hosting a barbecue and cornhole this Friday, September 23rd at 6.30 p.m. This will be at Rob Rippey's house. If you would like to attend, make sure you stop by the men's table in the foyer to get signed up. Ladies, this one's for you. We will be hosting a ladies bunko night here at the church Saturday, October 8th at 6 p.m. This event is completely free. All you have to do is bring an appetizer to share. If you would like to attend this event, make sure you get signed up at the bunko table in the foyer or online at victorychurchgf.com. Don't forget, Baptism Sunday is happening next Sunday, September 25th. If you would like to be water baptized, then make sure you get signed up at the Connect Center following the service. Last in the update, our starting point membership class is starting on October 2nd at 11 a.m. in classroom number one. If you'd like to become a member or serve in any capacity at Victory Church, this class is for you. You can sign up at the starting point table in the foyer or online at victorychurchgf.com. All right, Victory Church, that's all we have for you this week. For more updates throughout the week, make sure you follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Victory Church GF. Have, have a great, great week. week. Amen. Well, today we have some special guests with us today. We are so excited to introduce them to you uh, today. We want to thank Jeff and Renee Quackenbush for uh, a wonderful day yesterday, uh, the Rocky Mountain Treatment Center. They're the, the leaders of that organization, and they had a reunion uh, yesterday. We were, had the wonderful privilege of being a part of that, and it was such an incredible blessing to hear the stories of what God's doing through this resource. They also have a couple special guests that they've brought in with us, and I'm going to ask Brenda to come just for a few moments. I know you weren't expecting this, so I'm going to put you right on the spot. This is Brenda Crouch, everybody. Welcome, Brenda. Just, just say hi to the people. And uh, I, all, I already promised Brenda that at some other point we're going to bring her back because we want her to come back and share with us on a Sunday sometime. And so, but just, just greet the people and tell them something maybe God's got in your heart for us today. Of course. Right. Thank you. So wonderful to be with you and that worship team, y'all. Oh, <laughs> praise God. I, I'm just so appreciative of good worship. You know, it sets the atmosphere. And you know what? I just, I'm looking forward to my dear friend, Tracy, and, and she's going to minister deeply to you today about some things that the Lord has put on her heart. And I want to just encourage you right now that these are troubling times, and it's so easy for us to focus or want to focus on all that is wrong with the world, all that is wrong in our lives. And, you know, we pray, Lord, change our circumstances. But the thing that I love so much is how God will change what's going on inside of me. And when that begins to change, we begin to change the atmosphere. You are the body of Christ. And I just want to encourage you today that you bring a light to this world. Don't forget to walk in his love, in his grace, in his compassion, and never in offense. Because God will use you to bless someone who is trapped and imprisoned and in a world of discouragement and hopelessness. You are the hope because you bring the light of Jesus to this world. Amen. Right on. Thank you, Brenda. Well, our guest speaker today is uh, Dr. Tracy Strawberry, who is an international speaker, published author, CEO, and wife of baseball legend, Daryl Strawberry. How many remember Daryl? Yeah. Daryl was with us yesterday at the event, but he had to get on a plane at 6 o'clock this morning because he's speaking in Florida tonight. Let's be praying for Daryl. Amen. Well, after many years of battling addiction, alcoholism, and other life-controlling issues, Tracy surrendered her life to Jesus Christ and experienced a radical life transformation through the power of God and the process of change. 
um, Tracy holds a doctorate degree in theology with a focused study in cultural restoration and leadership. She holds her master's degree in business administration and management with a bachelor's in ministry leadership. She's no slouch, everybody. And Tracy believes that those who are lost will be found and those who are bound will be free. Would you stand to your feet and help me welcome today Dr. Tracy Strawberry. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, family. You may be seated. Thank you so much. And pastors, thank you so much for having me in the house of God and for the warm welcome that you all extended. Thank you very much for that. My dear friend, Brenda, and my dear newest friends, Jeff and Renee, just and Mama Gwen, and awesome Ethan. Y'all are a blessing. Boy, I wanted to sit down and just grab my pen and paper. Brenda, keep going. It's powerful, amen. We ready to get into the word of God? Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, the name above all names, we look to you and only you for our hope, our healing. Father, everything that you are, you sent your son, Jesus, 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 mm, to finish it all. And your spirit, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Have your way and do what only you can do. Anoint your word. Father, that they would hear you and not me, that they would see you and not me, that your name would be lifted up, that you would be glorified in this household, God. Father, we give our hearts to you. This is your platform. This is your stage. So help me to magnify you and glorify you and let our hearts receive you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 The title of the sermon today is The Pathway to Healing. And we are going to talk about forgiveness, trust, and boundaries. The freedom to forgive and the truth about trust. Before I gave my life to Jesus Christ, I didn't believe that I could be forgiven. I thought I fell too far, too far from grace. God, do you love women like me? God, could you restore a woman like me who lost custody of her three amazing, beautiful sons because of active addiction and alcoholism? Father, can you really restore a woman like me who just did not live a godly life, who was running in rebellion with my hurts and my pain driving the ship? Anybody? Father, could you really receive me into your arms? So that was my first challenge. Father, could you forgive me was my first question. And I was angry at God, so it was hard. Has anybody ever had that battle where it's like, okay, God the Father, and I have to come to you, but there's this thing in between me and you? That was me for a lot of years. And I wished I had come to Jesus earlier. That's, that was my prayer. Like, I shouldn't have waited so long, because now I know how good he is. Yeah. But when you don't know, you don't know, do you? So I'm here to tell you about how great he is. Amen. How mighty he is. And then my second question was once I gave my life to Christ was, okay, you have the power to save me, but do you have the power to heal me? Have you ever been in that place? I'm talking about Jesus loving Christians, Bible following, and the struggle is so real. You just don't know. That was me. So the Lord, of course, brought me into the word of God. So we're going to talk about the pathway to healing today. And I want to bring up three points right out of the gate that talks about how healing is produced. How do we experience the healing that Jesus died to give us? Number one, the power of the Holy Spirit. Healing is produced through the power of the Holy Spirit, not through human effort. Number two. Healing is made possible through the finished work of the cross of Jesus Christ, meaning we have to partner with Jesus. Amen. And listen and to the heeding and the leading of the Holy Spirit. The leading of the Holy Spirit, then we have to heed to that leading. Amen. Number three, healing is produced through and is experienced when we partner with God to get down to the heart of the matter. Those root issues, 
those things we hold on to that we don't want to give to God, the things that maybe we shake our fist at like I did for so long blaming God. God, why this? God, why that? Can I help somebody today? You may never know why. Oh, please lay that down. We may never know why. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. I know from the word of God that his plan is good for us. He is a good father who is worthy to be praised in all times. That we live in a sinful, fallen, flawed, broken world where sin comes in and operates through people and we hurt one another, where there's afflictions, things that happen to us that we didn't ask for and things that we do that we we can't believe we ever did, things happen. And that's the heart of the matter. That's the issue. The enemy wants you broken. The enemy wants you just wallowing in unforgiveness because he wants your heart heavy. He wants you bitter. Mm. The heart of the matter, where affection comes from. What does the Bible say about the heart? Hmm. Well, let's take a look. Amen. Let's look at Proverbs chapter four, verse 23. And I'm gonna read this three times from the NIV first, the King James Version second, and the New Living Translation third, because it teaches us a lot. Proverbs 4, 23 reads like this. It says, above all else, somebody say all. all. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Yeah. Everything, we have all and everything, which is all inclusive. Right. I mean, I don't need a doctorate degree to tell anybody that, right? Yeah. I think we all get that. King James Version, keep your heart with all diligence. Ooh, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it springs forth the issues of life. Mm. Wow. This heart thing is a powerful thing. Yeah. Yeah. Proverbs 4, 23, New Living Translation. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Wow. Determines the course of your life. Why are we dealing so much with the heart? Because hurts are housed in the heart. Yeah. Amen. There has to be a remedy. Remedy, excuse me, that's my doctorate degree too. <laughs> so God creates us. But God also has a plan for everything that we will encounter. He doesn't create us and just leave us alone. He creates us and gives us a plan and a purpose. And when we run into hardships, he creates a remedy. He creates a remedy. God, turn it around. He says, okay, this is how I do it. There's really not a whole lot of guessing to God because if I had a Bible up here and I was holding it, there's a whole lot of information in there. But until we get the revelation of the information, Pastor, amen, transformation cannot happen. That's it. Right there. So the revelation of the word is coming forth because of the power of the Holy Spirit that's having his way right now. Yeah. So as we continue to look at the heart right now, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9 for my note takers. Jeremiah 17, verse 9 says this. For the heart is desperately wicked. Who can understand it? Who knows, who really knows how bad it is? God created a, a desire for each and every person to love and to be loved. Love is his greatest thing. Out of the greatest gifts, Paul teaches us is what? It's love. Right. We can't run away from it. But when we don't get it, and when it's not exchanged, the body is created, the soul is created for release and relief and exchange of love. So when it's dysfunctional, when it's harmful, we can't help but chase it. But boy, we chase it in the wrong way. And the heart is deceitful above all else when it is unhealed. When it is unhealed. But he does not intend for us to stay that way. The healing's pathway because then not, we don't stop at Jeremiah 17 and verse nine. There's a 10, a verse 10 where he says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I give to each one that what's due. I, the Lord, will you let him search your heart? Will you let him get in that deep, dark place, that crevice? Yeah. See, that's why people have addictions. That's why we run into drugs and alcohol and pornography and lust. That's called Galatians chapter five. That's the sinful nature overpowering you, which it was never supposed to do. 
But the beauty of Galatians 5, 2, see, there's always bad news, but I'm here to talk about the good news. And the good news is the good news message of our Lord Jesus Christ, which tells us that the Holy Spirit will produce in us peace, love, joy, gentleness, kindness, discipline, self-control, to which I am to love you and you and you and my kids and my spouse. That's how we are called to love. So all we need to do is a little check mark box. Galatians chapter five will help you out a whole lot. It did to me because all my check marks were on the sinful nature side. <laughs> so praise God. He's like, look, Jesus is just like, come on. Like my spirit in you will heal your heart, which will then change your character. I needed the character of Christ. Right. Oh, yeah. which are all the fruits of the spirit I just told you about. I needed those unhealed wounds. Because I promise you, okay, I'm a pastor, so let me just do an illustration. <laughs> just saying. So people ask me to marry them all the time, and I go, ooh, hold on. We're going to go through some classes first. Because why? They're in love. Yeah. Ooh, we're in love. Like forever. Oh, I'm so in love. I love you. So then, you know, when they come up, what does the preacher do? Pastor, you stand in the middle right here, and you got one person on this side, one person on that side. And they're like, oh, honey, I just love you so much forever. I give you the most desperately wicked thing. Who could understand it forever and ever? Amen. I love you with all my heart, the most desperately wicked thing. And all the married people are like, Pfft. I mean, a huge light bulb went off, right? But then what happens is you're journeying the pathway of love. Yeah. What happens? Stuff. Yeah. And the next thing you know, the same people that came together who said I do and were holding their hands so tight, ooh, baby, forever, yeah. <laughs> sitting in my office, almost throwing things off my desk at each other. I say, oh, no, no, wait, no. We got to get on the right side of this thing. Because hurts come in, harms come in, lust comes in, all kind of things come in. That Galatians chapter 5 box. So God says, number one, I can only change your heart if you'll give it to me. He's a gentleman. The Holy Spirit won't come in without our full permission. I'm talking about all of it. Because if you want to hold on to your pain, if you want to hold on to your lust, if you want to hold on to that thing, pick it, whatever it is. If you want to hold on to your fear, you can't be helped. And help and hope is right here all the time. All the time. I had to surrender to Christ and say, yes, I give you all of me. And that was a, that was a whole lot to give him. I'm just saying he can handle it. It's okay. He's not surprised by all of you or any of you or any part of you. Give him that thing. That's the first thing. And the second thing, I had to obey his word. I had to obey his word. And forgiveness was a big thing for me because I had to receive his forgiveness because he died to give us all. So I have to be position myself to receive what he died to give me. Number two, I have to be willing to admit my wrongs and my faults. God, I'm a sinner. I have to be able to take those things to him that I didn't do because there was a whole lot of things I did do. So I needed to experience the forgiveness. And then I needed to heal from the things I didn't ask for that things were done to me. But how do you receive that forgiveness when things are done for the power of forgiveness? You have to forgive those people. Mm. Let's look to the scriptures for that. Take a breath. I like to sit for a minute just so that we know it's the Lord that does the work. Amen? Forgiveness. I'm going to introduce three big ideas right now. Three for my note takers. Forgiveness, these three principles that I'm going to define through scripture that God gives to us through his word is number one, it's absolute, it's not optional. If you want to be forgiven, Healed, whole, and free. If you want to be forgiven, healed, whole, and free, 
Forgiveness is not optional. It's absolute. And we're going to unpack this, and you're going to feel good about this when I'm done. So don't throw stuff at me right now. It's going to be all right. Number two, it's immediate. I know you really don't like me now. We don't delay. Number three, repetitive. It's again and again and again and again. But we're going to talk about a cycle of sin. And how do you love somebody who's stuck in it? So let's talk about number one and unpack this. Absolute forgiveness. It's not optional. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 15. I'll be reading New Living Translation. It reads like this. But if you refuse to give up, forgive others, your father will not forgive your sins. Ooh. How many of you know that when a spiritual principle comes along and God tells us to do something, the flesh rises up? It's just like, pfft. This thing happens on the inside of you. It's just like, boom, it's right there. Right, Jeff? We talked about this today. Yeah. That flesh. Yeah. Let me tell you what the flesh says. What, well, at least what it told me. I don't know. Father, if you knew what they did to me, you would never ask me to forgive them. Mm-hmm. What kind of loving God? Yeah, so good. Anybody? Yeah. If you knew, I will never forgive. He's like, my daughter. Remember what we talked about the heart. Remember what we talked about. See, the spiritual command that God gives us is he says forgive. The spiritual principle, why is it not optional? Because forgiveness is the cleansing agent of the heart. Forgiveness is the gateway to healing. It's the gateway to healing. The flesh does not sit on the throne, and if it does, you'll stay stuck. You'll be sitting in my office wanting to throw things at each other. I'm telling you right now. It's not optional. Let me tell you why. Forgiveness is freely given by Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank God. We don't have to earn it. We don't have to prove that we're worthy to be forgiven because nobody is worthy. Whether you had a little baby sin and you were like pastors here who lived like perfect forever, but it's not true. It's impossible, right? See, these are examples of keeping grace. You don't need a testimony like mine to say, I need Jesus. We all need Jesus because we're born with the sinful nature and we all fall short. So please don't hear me because people are like, oh, she really needs Jesus. I know. My hope is that y'all know it too. That's a testimony of keeping grace of what God will keep you from. When you listen to him and love him and obey him, that's receiving everything he has to give you. So it's not ours to withhold. It was freely given, freely received if you receive it. So then it's freely given away. The word forgiveness means release. When you study it out, I'm not going to bore you with Hebrew, Greek, and all that. Just know you can study it if you want. It means release. That's a beautiful word, isn't it? God is saying, give it to me. Because you have no business holding it because it will harm you. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Jeremiah 17, 10 says that. He goes, I'll give to people what they're due. Stop messing with that. Because it's messing with you. And it's hurting you. And it's taking you away from the greatness that I created you in. Will you get on board with the healing pathway that he created? I can't do it my way. I have to do it his way. It's the only way that works. Otherwise, each and every person would be able to create their own way. Let me know how that works out for you. It's not going to be good. I'm here to help. Just saying. Amen. Forgiveness is not our work or accomplishment. We never, ever work on forgiveness. It's not our work or accomplishment. It's the finished work of the cross of Jesus Christ, and therefore it is never broken. Amen? Which leads us to number two. Forgiveness is immediate. Scripture reference here, note takers, Matthew chapter 5, verse 23 through 24. I'm going to be reading the NASB. Therefore, if you are presenting your offering at the altar and there remember that your brothers have something against you, leave your offering there before the altar and go. First, somebody say first. First, be reconciled to your brother and then come and present your offering. Relationships are the greatest dynamic of the father. It's most important to him above all else. Amen? So it's immediate. He says right now, what does the flesh say? Woo, 
I ain't ready. I'm working on forgiveness. I'm like, I'm working on trying not to kill somebody right now. Lord, that's a commandment somewhere. I know that's in the Bible. I know. But the Lord says, I want it immediate. Why does he say that? Because he doesn't want a root of bitterness growing in you. Because bitterness turns into resentment, which turns into rage, which turns into ugly real quick. That's why he wants you to do it quickly, quickly, quickly. Again, it's not our work, is it? So forgiveness is never worked on. Never. It's a finished work. It is done. It is finished. We just listen. We heed. So that's how you receive when you heed to the word of God. Amen. Can we be in agreement? Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? God, Father, you're so good. Thank you that you make the way. Not optional. It's immediate. You don't have to prove to me. It's never withheld or denied or you will stay stuck. Yeah. They'll stay stuck. Have you ever heard somebody say when they've harmed you or hurt you or somebody's talking to you? Have you ever heard them say, Brenda, have you, you broke my forgiveness? Mm-hmm. Never have. We don't hear that, do we? Forgiveness is never broken. You broke my heart. Right. You broke my trust. So the struggle is not forgiveness. Let me help us all out here because the Holy Spirit helped me out. The struggle is pain. The struggle is pain. What I'm trying to deliver here is that we never withhold unforgiveness ever again because you have to stay in that pain if we don't heed the word of God. Pain is the struggle. An unhealed heart. You broke my trust. When you break my trust, you break my heart. I'm dealing with pain. I'm struggling with pain. So when God says to forgive immediately, watch, watch, watch. Forgiveness is immediate. It's the first step in the pathway of healing. It's not the entire journey. Your husband hurts you. Your kids hurt you. You hurt somebody, whatever. Will you forgive me? Yes, I forgive you. Watch, that's immediate. I say it immediately. Yes, I forgive you. But I don't trust you. And I need time to heal. Did you see that? Where's the struggle? Right here. Not forgiveness. So now point number three. Oh, I like this one a lot. too. (laughs) Forgiveness is repetitive. Over and over again. Matthew chapter 18, verse 21, 22 says this in the NIV. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Verse 22, Jesus says, "Mm mm-mm. Jesus answered, that's what it really says. I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. And even there, Jesus is giving an illustrative point. There is no number on forgiveness. But let's bring this back because what does the flesh say? Remember that flesh. Also, when I'm a doormat, like you just get to hurt me? Oh, no, no. That's not what the word of God said. I'm talking about loving somebody in a cycle of sin. This is what I call a cycle of sin. So my note takers, write that down. A cycle of sin. This is why we're talking about forgiveness, trust, and boundaries, because all three are healing's pathway. If you get stuck on one, you're going to think that you're a doormat and that being a good little Christian is allowing people to hurt you. My God in heaven, that's not what the word of God says at all. See, I can forgive you, but I can love you from a distance if I have to. That's That's called a boundary. Work with married couples all the time. Adulteries come in. I mean, because sex in society today, there's no sacred entity to that anymore. It's the most beautiful thing that God created between a married couple, between a man and a wife. The marriage bed is sacred, and it should be holy. And when my husband and I were dating, we didn't listen very well because we were all over the place, hadn't given our lives to the Lord, and we were living together, and that was wrong. We were having sex outside of marriage. And you know what that does to your soul? You know what it does to your heart? There's a remnant of darkness that lays in there, even talking about I love you. 
But see, when we love the right way and when we love God's way, he empowers us to love with boundaries. Because if I'm running around sleeping around like I used to, I'm going to keep it real in this house today because we need to be healed and whole. It teaches you to be a cheat. It teaches you to be lustful. It teaches you to say, well, if this one ain't good enough, I'm going to that one. Well, I have this experience. I'm trying to replicate that one. I could go on and on. It damages the purity. Oh, but the cross. Mm. You can bring that mindset to the foot of the cross today. And if you say, I surrender it, God, I want to get myself back with you. In my case, it was like, God, I need to be right with you the first time. I need to lay this stuff down because of the impurities in the heart. Now, going back to that thing, if you're married, for example, here's an illustration of the boundary. I forgive you, but I don't. And I need time to heal. So there has to be a boundary here. Because now this marriage bed is violated. And it's not okay for you to just come home and bring home anything to me. That's not okay. And it's not okay for me to just have to be here and be in this position and just close my eyes and grunt my teeth. You with me? But what did I do? I've started the pathway of healing. Because I said, I forgive you, but there needs to be examination. Let me help somebody. Godly counsel. Because in this step right here, we're talking about examining relationships. If you are married in this house, we don't get to just run off. We're in covenant commitment with God. Can't just run off. Bible says, see godly counsel. Godly counsel. That means we're not gossiping about each other. That means I'm not tearing my husband down and he's not tearing me down. That means we need to have a willing heart to go sit in front of the pastors or godly counsel, people who know the word of God and be submissive and say, yeah, I want to get rid of this thing because you can be healed and you can be whole. I'm here to tell you right now, and you can save your kids from going through stuff. I want to talk to my young people right now. You can be healed and you can be whole with things that have happened to you or things that you have done by bringing it to the cross and saying, Father, I submit, I commit. I submit, I I commit. Heal me in the things that are going on in my home. Heal me with the things that are going on at school, in this society, because it's hard to stand for you. Yeah, it's hard. But God's going to send you the right people. So don't get lost in your loneliness. Come on. You were never created to fit in. You were created to be set apart. Amen. Come on. Mm. Thank you, Father. Mm, When we know who we are and we obey him. I don't know where the... Can I get a time? How much time? Ten. Thank you. Mm. Because this is a big subject. So we've learned that forgiveness is not optional. It's absolute, it's immediate, and it's repetitive. What forgiveness is not, let's talk about that for a moment. Three points, number one. Forgiveness is not excusing or condoning what happened to you. I hope we've made that clear. It's never okay. So set yourself free. Many people will not forgive because that's what they think. If I tell you I forgive you, then what I'm saying is what you did to me is okay, or I'm giving you permission to do it again. Oh, no. Oh, no. Mm -mm, Number two. It does not always mean reconciliation. Again, if you are married, seek godly counsel. We don't get to just run away. But if you are not, this is in friendships. This is in dating relationships. Does that person, people who are dating, does that person bring you closer to Christ or are they causing you to compromise Christ? That's why he says don't be unequally yoked. Don't try to rescue folk. Talking about codependency now, I don't have time, Pastor. Just don't. Oh, Lord, help me. Jesus, that's a whole nother. That's like a weekend conference. Yeah, We'd have food and everything. Help us, Lord. Jesus is the Savior. Amen. I'm just saying he's got a pathway for that too. So when we follow the word of God, why does he give us these commands? Why does he give us, some people call them rules. I call them safeguards. I call them love. He's trying to protect us. 
He's trying to heal us. He's trying to strengthen us and encourage us. He's trying to lead us back in. When the train gets derailed, we get to get right back on. Praise the Lord our God. Forgiveness, what it's not, number three. It does not mean that everything is just okay right now. Lord have mercy. My husband and I. Oh, we could tell y'all some stories with the reason of trying to help people. Because the devil's not up to anything new, is he? He's just not. But guess what? Jesus is not either. Jesus is up to making all things new. Amen. He's up to making all things new. My husband and I dealt with adulteries, addictions, $3 million in debt. We had nothing when we came to Christ. Nothing but dysfunctional hearts. But boy, when we got on board with Jesus, he healed our hearts. We were making each other pay for the pains and the wounds in our hearts because we wouldn't forgive. We weren't healed. We didn't even know what was wrong with us until the word of God enlightened our heart and our mind, which is a promise of the Holy Spirit. We said, we got to get on board. Got to get on board with Jesus. We have the opportunity. We're going to have the opportunity here soon to get back on board with him. Some of you, for the first time, get on board with him, what forgiveness is. Number one, it's the gateway to healing. Number two, it's the cleansing agent of the heart. Number three, it's God's first step to remedy what's been done to you, what's been done. It's his first step in the healing process to remedy that broken heart and broken trust. So many people are trying to rebuild trust with a broken heart and they won't forgive. It doesn't work like that. They try to go on vacation and go out to dinner. Let me tell you how that, how did that go? Not real good, right? You're looking over the rolls going, because all you can think about is what happened. A little vacation is not going to take it away. So I don't do that. Just come to the cross. Let's just start where it's supposed to start. Amen. People hurt each other that way. Trust and forgiveness. We're closing with this. Here's a comparison. This is the healing process. Forgiveness is not our work, but the finished work of Jesus Christ. Displayed through his character and the work done on the cross. Trust and healing takes work. It takes time. It's developed and displayed through our integrity, our character, and our ability. It takes time, and this is where the work is. But we can't do it. It's a supernatural work that we partner with God because the Holy Spirit will then do the supernatural work. Are you with me? This is how we partner. This is how he works. Mm. Forgiveness is immediate, never broken, never needs to be rebuilt. Nobody ever needs to prove that they're worthy of forgiveness. We just do it right away. Have we settled that? Praise the Lord. We just kicked the devil in the teeth. Hallelujah. Trust gets broken. Amen? Trust gets broken. It takes time to become trustworthy. I had to learn how to become trustworthy because I lost custody of my kids. There was a reason for that. It's not because I wanted to. The desire of love was not enough. I needed a heart change, and I needed a character change, and I needed to submit my life to Christ, and I needed to commit my way to the ways of God. Forgiveness is not optional. It's a spiritual command. We do not get to choose who we forgive. Trust is optional. There's where your power is. Trust is optional. And the Bible's very clear about trust. If you look up all the scriptures on trust, how God tells us, we did a few. Like above all else, guard your heart above all else. That's boundaries he's talking about. So God bless you. We have the ability to do boundaries, right? That's how we get our power back. In the midst of an unthinkable situation, in the midst of a hard time, you are not a doormat. Submission is not a dirty word. It's a beautiful, powerful word, especially for people who are married and children who are supposed to submit submit to their parents. Think of submission. When we submit, we're supposed to be submitting to vessels who are submitted to God. Woo! Mm. that's when it's beautiful 
It's not demanding. It doesn't put down. It doesn't break the spirit of the children. It doesn't break the hearts of one another. That's not what it is. Praise the Lord our God. Forgiveness is released. It's not accomplished. Trust is accomplished over time, and so is healing. There are no degrees of forgiveness. We settled it. There are different degrees, levels of trust. They will not all be the same. Forgiveness, even playing field at the foot of the cross. To the worst of the sin, to the smallest of sin, sin is sin is sin. And the first step in dealing with it is forgiveness. Trust is optional. Pastor, if you could. We have an opportunity right now to get on board with Christ and to get on board in his way of doing things. I'm talking about people like me who thought you fell too far. I'm talking about marriages who think they're too far gone. Lord have mercy. I'm talking about children. I'm talking about young people who think it's going to be too hard and you just can't do it anymore. You, yes, you can. God's going to show you a way. He's going to show you a way in the midst of the hard things. Jesus is the savior. Jesus is the healer. It's his greatest desire. It's why he went to the cross. Don't delay. He loves you. He loves you. His power is unspeakable. It's unthinkable. It's beyond the human mindset. Taste and see that our Lord is good. Amen. <laughs> I know I let you get down there and... Uh sit down but I want you to pray okay if you would yes if you related in any way to that message this morning I'm just going to invite you to stand just as a sign I need I need I need that in my life I need amen look at this look at this God is at work right now I just want you to take a moment, okay? I want you to just position yourself in a place of reception. Just lift your hands toward heaven. Dr. Tracy's going to pray for us, and we're going to believe that even now, something is going to break. Something is going to break. Right here. Right now. Let's receive it in Jesus' name. Please repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I submit my life to you. I ask you to forgive me so that I can receive your love. And Father, I forgive and say the name right now say the situation whether it's under your breath give it to him right now let's continue father I forgive every person every part of the situation and I trust you heal my heart heal my mind heal my memories I put all my faith and all my trust in you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God's word does not return void. Amen. I'm going to ask if you would just to bow your heads one more time just for a moment. We never want to close our service without giving people an opportunity to come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe you're here today and you came as a guest of someone, or maybe God just brought you here. We just need you to know God really loves you. I mean, He really loves you. He loved you so much, He sent His Son Jesus to die on the cross. Jesus shed His life's blood to pay the price for your sin and mine. And on the third day, He rose again from the dead, declaring Himself to be God's one and only Son. You can believe the gospel is true because Jesus is the only one that ever overcame the grave. 
Today, by putting your trust in Christ, what he did for you on the cross, through his death and resurrection, receiving him as the Lord of your life, you can become a child of God and have the hope of an eternal and an abundant relationship with him forever. And perhaps you're here today and that's you, and you sense that today God's knocking at your heart's door and you're ready to receive his forgiveness. I'm going to lead us in a prayer this morning. And if that's you, I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer with faith in your heart. We're going to invite everybody to pray it, but specifically, specifically those of you who want to make Jesus Lord of your life today. Come on, let's pray this prayer together. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me. I believe you sent Jesus, your son, to die on the cross for me. He shed his blood for my sin. And on the third day, I believe he rose from the dead. I now boldly receive Jesus Christ as the Lord of my life. I'm giving my whole life to him. With your help, I'm going to do my best to serve him and to obey him all the days of my life. Thank you, Father, that according to your word, I now have a brand new life that is abundant and eternal through Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. Can we celebrate God's goodness today? Come on, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, listen, if you prayed that prayer with us today, we believe you got born again. You're now part of the family of God. And I'm going to ask you to do something very bold this morning. And if it wasn't important, I wouldn't ask you to do it. But back at the back table, Sherry's back there. If you prayed that prayer with us today, would you just stop back by that back table and tell Sherry, I prayed that prayer with Pastor Gary. We've got some material we put together to help you begin to live this new life in Christ. And if you don't have a Bible, stop back by the table. We want to give you the Word of God today. We want you to go home with a Bible. It's our gift to you. We're just so grateful that each and every one of you came to the house of God today. And I just want to tell you, if you don't have anything else going on, I'd stick around for service number two. Because I think God's got something more that He's going to be even communicating in the next service. So you might want to not just... You don't want to beat the Baptist to, to, to four Bs today. You, you want to be in the house to get all of God's word. Are you glad you came to Victory Church today? Are you happy? Amen. Amen. Some of our prayer partners are going to be down here in front following our service. If you need prayer for any reason, just step out from where you are. Let us pray for you. We're going to believe God for miracles today. One last thing. Lift your hands toward heaven. Come on, let me pray a prayer of blessing over you. Father, I declare these people are blessed coming in. They're going to be blessed going out. They're blessed in their spirit, blessed in their soul, blessed in their body, and just blessed in all their resource. As we go from this place today, we go as ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven to make a difference in the world in which we live. And we are anointed to do so. And Father, we're going to return next Sunday rejoicing in all the great things you've done in us and through us according to the promise of your word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you again real soon.